You know, my father always said a penny saved is a penny earned. And I think organizations probably try to follow in the, the same line. You know, how do we maximize profits? One of the ways we can do that is by figuring out ways to uh, cut corners or to, to save money wherever possible, where we don't have to have unnecessary expenditures. So, hi, my name is Thomas Lewis. I'm here to talk to you about software defined access and how Cisco's approach to this can help you not only save money, but improve your customer experience. And we'll talk about the evolution from SD-WAN to SDA. We'll go into a demo and finish this up with a call to action. You know, so when I think about SD-WAN, when I first came on board Cisco uh, 10 years ago, that was the really big deal. Figuring out a way to have our offices have tunnels that connected to our data centers, or the cloud to give us the appropriate access to our applications while not leveraging those expensive MPLS connections. We can leverage internet circuits, which provide the same amount of bandwidth at a fraction of the cost, but maybe there's different types of SLAs. SD-WAN would have the intelligence to figure out if these tunnels were healthy enough for our applications to flourish and what that experience looked like, and we could move over to different tunnels when necessary to ensure that that experience made a whole lot of sense. Now, that evolution evolved into SASE, and especially when we saw COVID hit and other pieces, uh, workloads, users, devices were no longer inside just these corporate offices. We saw them move into homes, into coffee shops, into parks, and the applications themselves have grown exponentially during that time. So figuring out a way to quickly provide the best of cloud networking, the best of cloud security into SASE to provide that overall quick experience so that users can get to the applications they need in a secure fashion with that on-demand experience was pivotal. Now, we didn't simply stop there. SDA, or Software Defined Access, is a newer approach that uh, allows us to handle that plumbing on the back end. Maybe some applications require a VPN connection, maybe we're going through another way to access other different types of apps, and a lot of times what we're doing with older models, we're just simply creating some VPN tunnel to take us back to our corporate data center where we're hitting some type of firewalls, we're doing our inspection to go back out to the internet to access our application. With SDA, we can handle that plumbing on the back end unbeknownst to the end user to provide a faster experience, but we can put them closer to their applications. So you don't have to not necessarily go back into your data center to go back out to the internet to hit the cloud. You can actually just have that secure connection putting you closer to that app with the same type of parameters you would find uh, going back into your data center. So much, much faster for this end users, better operations, better experience, uh, and better cost savings. So I'm going to sh offer a quick demo real quick. We're going to go into what it looks like to create one of these tunnels, go through the dashboard itself, and then we'll have our call to action. All right, here we are in our secure access demo. This is a read-only demo, so there's some things I can do and some things I can't. Uh, but in this case, we're going to provide a quick overview and show how easy it is to create a tunnel. So this is our overview. On the left-hand side, we can see our navigation pane. Uh, we can do workflows, administration. We can see what type of resources we're looking at, uh, as well as what our connections are, our users and groups, network connections, and so forth. This right here is providing a quick overview. We can see that we've got a disconnected tunnel as well as a connected tunnel. We can see what the data transfers look like uh, for the different uh, objects, as well as we can change the, the time, whether it's the last 24 hours, seven days, or a month. So let's look real quick how it is to create a tunnel. Uh, if I go down to workflows, uh, this kind of walks us through a step-by-step -step to, to make it very easy. Uh, I click on the configure infrastructure. In this case, I want to create a tunnel. Uh, so I can simply come inside here. We can see the tunnels that are already connected. Uh, again, this is read-only, so we're going to show you what it's like to create this existing SJ1. So uh, if I click on add, <clears throat> I can give it that tunnel name. Uh, from here, we can select the appropriate region. Uh, we'll select US Pacific Northwest and then the device type, and this will be an ISR. Uh, once we click Next, uh, we can give this a tunnel ID. Uh, so this would be, uh, for example, SJ1. Uh, and then we want to do the passphrase, <clears throat> which will be the secure access number one here and here. And actually, we're going to name this demo. SJ1. 
Now, uh, for the routing perspective, I actually want to do uh, an autonomous system. Uh, so we're going to put in that AS number, which is 65217. Uh, once that's in here, if I selected save, it would go in and create the tunnel. Now, what we can go inside here is take a look at go to connect, select network connections. Uh, from here, we can go to uh, network tunnel groups. Uh, and this is going to show us that SJ1 that we just walked through that configuration. Uh, but if I highlight this, this will take me to the summary. We can see the, uh, uh, the peering BGP AS uh, as well as primary secondary hub. Uh, and we can see what that connection is and all that relevant information. Uh, from here, uh, we can do other different things. Now that we've established that connection, we can go in and look at things like users and groups. Uh, you can import this, and this is only read-only, so I don't have a lot of access here. Uh, but from here, you can import a CSV file. You can add Active Directory, uh, the World Components, your Oyster. Once you have those pieces added, uh, then you can start doing things like traffic steering, uh, setting up zero trust, virtual private networks, and so forth. So all of this is uh, very, very easy. It's supposed to be intuitive and uh, very seamless to walk through. Um, so I hope that makes a lot of sense. All right, well, that concludes our SDA demo. The call, ooh, the call to action is to scan this QR code that's gonna take you to our Cisco SDA homepage. We're gonna find more information and a deeper dive into the content that I provided here. If I am your SE, please feel free to reach out. If you're accessing this from my YouTube channel, you can always try to contact me there. And I always recommend that you get in touch with your Cisco sales team. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to speaking with you again next month.